My name is Sharon Quinn, and I'm also known as the original Runway Diva, and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. My guest lecturer today is professional actor, producer, director, writer, and talent manager Jacqueline Kennedy. She is also the author of the new children's book, Shoop Doobie Doop. Welcome to Model Behavior, Jacqueline Kennedy. Thank you. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with the title of that book. It's okay. So what's going okay. on, girl? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. You know, I got a lot of questions, a lot, a lot of questions to ask you because you do a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. I do, I do. But um, we, can start at the, we can start with, let's start with the children's book because sure. that's right here. How did you come up with the concept for this? So um, my mom is a teacher. I'll say is because even though she's retired, she constantly teaches all the time. And one day I saw my nephew on her lap and he was, she was just teaching him one or two things and he was about three and she was doing the at words, at, pat, scat. And anything that begins with, anything in the alphabet, just put it with at and you have a word. And I said, that's, that's kind of interesting. And then I kept thinking about it and I wanted to put that to rhyming and your first sight words, uh, Pat and her cat, Matt, and he wears her hat. Oh, like cat and a hat, like Dr. Seuss. Very, okay. very similar. Okay. And I wanted to basically show, show color as well, mm -hmm. diversity in our, in our books. So with that, um, it's called Shoop Doobie Doop because she also scats. Shoop Doobie Doop Doobie Doop Doobie oh. Doobie Doobie Doobie. Doobie, Doobie. Okay, and then it, it repeats now. itself. And then it repeats itself. So, yeah. how how did you self-publish this? I did. How long? Talk me through the process. How long did it take? Um, well, the the hardest thing for me was finding an illustrator that I I liked, and I liked his work, Marcus uh, Williams. And so, once I found his work and we spoke, and I liked his energy, then my publisher, who is actually in Atlanta, they put everything together for me. They put the rights together. They did everything for me with me there. Okay. So um, with that, I still do myself my my own, um, just getting the book out there through Amazon, going out to book signings and things of that nature. Okay. So now, I've had other authors on. Mm -hmm. And they've all told me that editors, mm -hmm. illustrators, mm -hmm. all of these things are very, very important. Correct. So how does how so, does one find an illustrator? So, I, so basically, I, I, I do I self published, but then I have my illustrator, uh, my editor, and everyone in one package with one company. Oh, even though okay. they don't help me push the book as much as I push the book myself. Okay. So that's that is actually what I did and what I've done and what I will continue to do probably is utilize them to help me get my book out there. But not everybody has an in-house, a, publish, a publishing Correct. company with all of that stuff in-house already. They do not. They do not. So I was just, I guess, I can't say lucky, but my business partner uh, through Rick Leg, which is my talent management company, he helped me find this company to, that already had some of those things already in place. Okay, so mm -hmm. now you self-publish, mm -hmm. but you have a publisher. Well, it's it's a, well they don't help me push the book put, put, get the book out there. But so so I guess I do have a publisher who helped me put everything together. So maybe I'm mis misstating that. So I but did I you do the pay book for myself. everything? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So then that's self publishing. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's how I feel. I self published my own book. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now you said that you it took you a. a I'm stuck on this illustration because I love this color. It thank just you. this this cover it just jumps right thank out you, at thank you, you thank which you. is what a, a, I understand. It's her eyes that get that get you. Actually, it's the thing about a book though. Mm -hmm. People won't pick it up if the cover doesn't jump out Correct. at them. And you said it took Correct. you a minute to find someone that had the right Correct. chemistry with you. Correct, because I, I went through a few people and their work was was great. Is is great. However, I wanted someone that could give justice to the character of Pat mm -hmm. and and then the cat as well. Basically when I say that her hair had to be right, her eyes had to look a certain way for me. Mm -hmm. so, um, at one point they were just a little too small even though I did find um, Marcus, I, I still had to ha have him go back and 
speak, you know, talk him through, okay, I want the eyes to be a little bit larger. I want the cat's eyes to be a little larger because I wanted to really attract children, period. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my, my thought was if the eyes are too small, it, it, it just doesn't say as much. It doesn't bring you, it doesn't pull you in. Mm -hmm. So um, Those are big eyes. Those are big eyes. <laughs> those are big eyes. Those are large eyes. Now, those are large eyes. So, okay, so I'm going to get all up in your business because mm -hmm. I'm just nosy mm -hmm. like that. So what, what ballpark, what's, what is a, a illustrator to hire them? What does something like that cost? Um, you know, because he's very, very good. Uh, the whole well, process who was, 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 was a couple, no very, very was, bad, was a, was a, was or just a very a couple, okay a couple illustrator. Foul. <laughs> a couple foul. Okay. A couple foul. But, but it's worth it because it is worth this it. Is... As a matter of fact, I'm waiting for him now. I'm waiting for him to to do my other two, my other two books. So you have other books I that have you're other working books on in the in the process. And why children's books? Well, it was to give back to my mom because she is so into children and education. Mm -hmm. And my thought was to be able to give back to children, to give to children some of the things that my mom has given. So actually, the book, the, this book is dedicated to my mom. Oh. Yeah, it's dedicated to my mom, Hazel S. Stout. Okay. <laughs> so and she, and she was the first grade teacher. First, so, and first that's when teacher. you get exactly. little sponges And that's then. when you get them, and that's when they start to read, yeah. and, and that's why I My first grade that. teacher was, was, she took it, she saw an she took an interest in me early on because she mm -hmm. saw a talent in me, mm -hmm. and she she was the best mentor I could ever have because right. of her I got a scholarship to private school. It opened up a whole wow. that's, whole that's world great. for me. So I, I, res I have an amazing amount of respect Correct. And for I realized teachers. that even with my mom, that even though she retired, she continues to teach at every given step. Which is she that, probably that's teaches, in, she every, teaches in everything she time. does in her life. In everything. Yep. In everything. Yep. So now, I appreciate that. Yes. You 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 mentioned break a leg talent, mm -hmm. and you're a talent manager. Mm -hmm. So talk about talk about how well how'd you get into that? <laughs> <laughs> well, started out acting. I started out acting and performing. I came to New York uh, to go to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy here in here in the city. Okay. So. I did that and I had to find and feel my way so basically it it is a school that it used to be a school where they taught you the dance they taught you the, how to sing and they and they honed all those crafts that you already have one thing they did not teach at that time was how to go about go out and get your job mm -hmm. so that took me a while to figure that out where exactly do I get my headshots how do I um, go out and and book some things so those things they weren't actually teaching. You know, I would see people at the backstage, and I would have to ask them, well, what's the backstage? Because coming from North Carolina, I didn't necessarily yeah, know what yeah. was happening at that time. So I had figured out backstage and going on auditions and things of that nature. And it was a trial to, to do certain things. And then I realized what a casting call is with your lines. Oh, you came lines, here completely green. Lines. Oh, yo, yes. Oh, yes, lines and lines. And lines. I said, okay, well, this is interesting, but at the same time, this is a lot. I may have to get back to my job. <laughs> I may get back to work. So it, it just took a while to figure out things and what I wanted to do and, and the process of sending out your headshots all the time, doing mass mailings. And I, I hadn't even figured doing out. that anymore. I know, exactly. And so that's where I started. And but I had to learn that on my own, you know, to a large degree. So uh, what I did was I started a a production company called Kennedy Productions at mm -hmm. first, which was in Brooklyn, and I had open mics. And from there, I would have people come in and and sing or do their do monologues or what have you. Have some agents come in so that they could try to be discovered as well while I'm still doing my own thing. And I also started teaching teenagers how to go out on calls, how to go out on auditions. I would take headshots of them, make sure they were correct. I was, uh, <laughs> I was doing everything, taking headshots, and I would go with, with them to auditions and everything. So I, I, I like the fact of managing them to teach them how to do it, even though someone wanted to be models. I said, okay, well, I'm not a model per se, but I could teach you this portion of the business. So in doing that, I just continue to have my open mics and doing other things. I had a store in North Carolina. Uh, what kind of store? Yeah, uh, African American retail called Sister to Sister. My sister and I opened the, sh the shop together, 
And that was after 9-11 <laughs> that I went back to North Carolina and opened a store. And, and I was doing some production work there for another TV show called uh, Not Just the Blues, which talked about trauma in the black neighborhoods. So I helped them produce that show it, there. And then when I came back to New York, I continued the acting and, and going on different auditions and com shooting commercials and booking commercials, some commercials and things. And from there, fast forward now, Break a leg talent management. I spoke to one of my managers, Rose Saez, okay. and I told her that I still I wanted to do some of that myself. If especially if I went back to North Carolina, I wanted to be able to do the talent management. And so she introduced me to my current business partner, Mark Ham. Okay. And from there, he was so fast. I'm thinking it's gonna take us about a couple of six months or so to get everything together. He was like, no, we're gonna put up a website. <laughs> you can up a website, you, you'll handle New York, I'll handle um, Atlanta, and together we'll do Charlotte. I said, excuse me? <laughs> That's a little fast. What are we, what are we talking about here? What? <laughs> so I said, okay. So before I knew it, within a month's time, literally, we had a website up, we started having seminars, we started going out recruiting people, seeing, seeing who needed assistance with just getting themselves out there and doing it correctly. And you handle actors and ha actors, singers, and singers. We had a poet. We had some book writers, some um, some authors. But we realized that some of, and we had cho a lot of children at one point as well. Mm -hmm. But there are different things that come with working with authors. It's not the same as wanting to, wanting to see your talent. Um, singing or acting and making sure that they're getting out there. The authors, it was a little bit difficult to find a route for them, for us. Okay. And with children, <clears throat> as dear as they are to my heart, <laughs> shoot, do, me, do, do, as dear as they are to my heart, it's difficult to work with them because you have to go through their parents. Yep. And working through their parent with their parents became a little bit difficult for us because they can't get off work. Um, little Johnny needs a new pair of shoes. I have to go out and get that before I get him to the audition. No, we need you to be there at the audition yeah, now yeah. at this time. And so that became a little difficult for us, so we pulled out of that. And so now we just pretty much work with adults. Okay. So, and, and then you've had success? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. We don't have anyone that's huge, but we have a lot of people that get com work on commercials. Uh, or just new black McDonald's mean commercials. They're gonna be huge later. You know, exactly. So, so we just stick with it. And work we love is it. work. I mean, work please. is work, and that's what we that's what we tell them. You know, there's something that you often tell your 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 models that you work with: be professional, be on time, which is be early. Make sure that you communicate with us. Uh, confirm. You know, these are things that. Sometimes we take we we took for granted, but it's things that we also can teach and that we've had we have taught. I had a young man that booked a commercial in Atlanta two weeks ago, and he called me and said, "I'm here." I said, "You're there." I said, "It's twelve o'clock. The shoot is at at, new, at, at two o'clock." He said, "I know. I wanted to be early." I said, that's two hours early. Yeah, that's a little too early. I appreciate it. Go grab a coffee nearby. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't get I no place so two, two hours early. Him being there that early. And then I then you have some that will be there. I had one that was there and then left because he just didn't know how you know know the ropes. And I, I was like, but this I don't know if he thought I wasn't paying enough for him. I didn't know what was happening there. But, what, yes, what, that, what? and that's when <laughs> we get to the place where y you left. Why? And then we have to scramble to try to find someone. I'm still stuck in it. It didn't pay enough. <laughs> but but it's, it's work. And that's what you want. You you got lots of paying <laughs> gigs that you can walk away from one? <laughs> I'm just like, what is going on here? So... Do you find it we, that it's 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 this generation? Because I like to stick a lot of blame on y'all for some of the stupid it stuff y'all do. It is, and it's quite unfortunate that they think a pretty face, uh, a great body, can get them in just in the door. You have you need the talent. You, you can need, get in the door need, for that, but you can't. But you can't follow it correct. up. You're gonna have to show a proof. Correct, correct. And so we teach. We ask them to take classes to you know, make sure you have great headshots. 
continue getting headshots. You can do a selfie. You can you can have people do you know even do a few a few photos for you. But initially, a selfie is not a headshot. It isn't. But when you go in, you have to have a headshot. You have to have, you need a professional headshot. You can have those in the database. But at the same time, that's not gonna get you the job. No, and casting directors know what a professional exactly. headshot exactly. looks like. Exactly. So those are things we try to teach. Go get great headshots, please. And you yeah. and know that you're going to do this mm -hmm. throughout your career. Exactly. As you change, exactly. you're you're gonna have to update your head. It's the same exactly. thing with 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 modeling. Exactly. You cut off all your hair. You know what you got to do? Yes. You got to shoot some new pictures Correct. with your new hair. Correct. I had I had a role one time when I was in college. And it was so funny because for me, I had gotten the role. I was uh, one of the primary people on stage. And I went and shaved my hair right here. I got two little things in my head. And the you casting so director. Fired. I know you got fired. The correct casting director. I was like, what did you, you we have to put a wig on you now. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people I've had to fire yes, because I booked because... them because they looked a certain way mm -hmm. and then I happen to be on there and I will look at your Facebook page models if you're working with me please know that I will stalk your Facebook and Instagram pages and then I see something different yes. so I'm in by something like, did you just cut off all your hair yes well yeah this yes. is how I'm gonna rock it for the summer mm -hmm. okay so I gotta let you go because yes. I booked you because of the yes. the head that the hair you had, head of and hair now you just or changed that look it. That you had. So now I gotta mm -hmm. I gotta book somebody exactly. else. Now it's, it's a little easier if you if you dye it and you can dye it back to a degree, but when you cut and you chop, that is it. Like, uh, that is it. And those are things like we try to tell anymore. them all the time. Can't and they don't they don't mm -mm. they don't think about first mm -mm. of all they don't think of themselves as a brand or a commodity Correct. or a business. And if you got an agent, if you are blessed enough. <laughs> To have an agent, you have to consult your agent on everything, everything you do everything. that comes everything. that has to do with all of this. Exactly. Even with even with men and their facial hair. Absolutely. If you have now grown a beard and I submit your photo with no beard and and I have to I literally have to ask, are you clean shaven? Are you what, are you rocking a beard right now? What is going on? And I say, okay, well you've been submitted and you've been booked with no be with no hair. So you got to cut so that off. So you got to cut that off. Absolutely. Or, or you have to be prepared when you go in and they don't like that look to be able to shave it right then and there. Yep. I said, but they don't really so want I got my to clippers do that. with me. No problem. But, yes. It's exactly. just hair. It'll it's grow just, back. Exactly. I had to do that recently as well. Just let them know. Yeah, you got to cut that off. I said, but you can go in like that, but be prepared to cut it off. But they kept it for. Him. Yeah, it's, it's yes, <laughs> yes. They, they, they're, they're not, they're not thinking at all. Take two all. or three changes of clothing. If something may not work, it may not look good. The other person may may be wearing something that that doesn't. Um, and figure doesn't... out your favorite. Figure out the color that works best Correct. on your skin tone. Yes. Me, yes. I got an audition. You can be assured I'm being some orange. <laughs> I'm being some yellow, yes. some pinks, because I know bright colors make my skin pop. Correct. I'm not gonna show up in olive green because that don't look good for me. Correct. You gotta, if you, you, it's little things that make the mm -hmm. difference between getting the job. It, it definitely and you is. have to be willing to go the extra mile. And I don't see that sort of work ethic no. anymore. No, people don't think going the extra mile means taking an extra class, getting there early, um, worrying about the, your, the color that fits you. They just think that they just can show so up and that's, it. And that's uh, it. That is no. it. No, that shows your belly button and too much cleavage, and that's not the role you're a grandmother in this. And how about this? Is my favorite. Part. <laughs> I didn't see so much stuff as a Cassie person. Said so, so. Stand in front of the uh, in in front of the camera. Say your name and where you're from. And they go, Sharon Quinn, New York, New York. Mm -hmm. You just lost the job. Mm -hmm. You just lost it. Okay. There's Tell no, them why they just lost There's no enthusiasm. Them. You mumbled. Uh, no one cares now. <laughs> They're not even looking You're at you now. You're not even smiling. <laughs> Please smile. <laughs> give us, a, yeah, give us some energy. Uh, yeah, you you've lost it now. Now, have you? Are there people that you? What what are you? What is the thing that makes you say, Yeah, I don't. I don't think you're gonna be a good fit for us. Um. When they keep, when they don't ask us enough questions and think they, they have it, whereas I have a young woman, and she's a little older, and she doesn't feel like her hands, that she can be a hand model, and she keeps getting called because she has a great, great look, and she says, but my hands aren't this, my hands aren't that, and I said, I don't care. We don't know what they're looking for. 
You're going to go in and take your hands in there, and we're going to book this job. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're about to do. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Um, well, I have a scar on my ear, and it's for earrings, and I, we don't know what they're looking for. You're going to go How in you there. You shoot yourself and, and, in the foot yes, like and that. That's what I keep telling most of the talent. You don't think for the casting people. You, the, the casting directors, you don't ca you don't think for them. You go in no matter what because if they don't book you for this, they may have something else that they, that they could book you for. Oh, how about I the said, flaw that you think is a flaw? Exactly, might be the very thing that they're looking exactly. for. Exactly, exactly. And, and so those so those things are the things that get me. No, I'm not going to do this audition because. Um, my front tooth got yellow because whatever reason, you know, I, I'm not going to do that because um, the one we get a great deal with the men, especially Atlanta, uh, I'm not going to do that role because I'm not gay. We nobody asked you to be gay. I didn't ask you. I don't care. That's not the issue. This is paying, and I'm going to need you going to it's the audition. Acting. <laughs> and that's what, and that's what my business partner helps them to understand even more so than I than I do, especially my men. So those things, you're thinking too much. You're acting, you want to be a performer, this is what you do. You, you go in and do this. And then I have to give them examples, such as um, Martin, Martin Family. One of the guys isn't even gay on the show. But he, he is plays a great... A game. He is great on the show. So those are things you have to think. You have to think out the box. It, this is not you playing a role. It is you. It's not. It's not you. It is the character. It is a role. And is this role going to take you that much closer Correct. to the goal? Correct. Whatever that goal is. Whatever for you. the goal is that you set Correct. for you. Please have set one. Please yeah. have one. <laughs> At least one. Please have one. At least one goal. At least one goal. So now we, so we got about things. we got about eight minutes left. So and I'm holding on to this because I remember it oh, no. from <laughs> from when I first met you uh -huh. and we were talking and you said something to me that hey made my whole head go, huh? You said that you used to be a professional race car driver. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Talk about that, because I'm sitting there going, I ain't never met nobody that's yes. done that. Man, she black <laughs> and a woman? I need to know. Well, it was when I it, when I moved back to North Carolina, I was sitting at the bar trying to figure out my life. And I was sitting there, and a, a race car driver manager said something to me about race cars. And I said, yeah, I would love to drive a race car. Of course, who wouldn't? He said, OK. I'm gonna need you to come down to the racetrack. I said, no, seriously, I would like to do this. So basically, we got on the track, and I did some, I did a few uh, interviews as far as being a black race car driver. I only, I drove a roadster, a roadster, which is not a large car, but it was something that was exciting. I would go around the track, and I would spin out, and I'm like, okay, let me get myself together. But I never was able to get, um, we were never able to get sponsorship as black race car drivers. Really? Yeah, it was very difficult, but I was one of the first black race car drivers in North Carolina to actually be able to be on a team of race car drivers. What was the team called? Um, well, my my name was actually called, my name was um, JQ. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, my manager came up with that. I don't even know how he came up with that. And each of us just had our had our own little names. But yeah, mine was JQ for, as a race car driver. So they, no, the guy mm -hmm. just he just started up a conversation. He just in the started bar? up a conversation, and he said something about he was a race car driver manager. And I was like, I would love to do that. And he said, we don't have any black women. And I said, I can do that. And at that time, not really telling my age, but I was almost forty. <laughs> and my mother said, Oh my goodness. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you thinking? Okay, what are you so thinking? and they, and he he took you on mm -hmm. and they, they, on. they gave you the training. Mm -hmm. They gave me the training, and then he would take me out to go do speeches about being a race car driver and what that would look like for black women in this in this in this era of not having any black. And actually, it was almost right around the time of um, Danica Patrick. Oh, okay. It was around, it's about that time, but there's so many different things. You have to have a sponsor. Well, that, that's know, with get, everything. Yeah, but the sponsor to get the car, to get the the time to to do the racing. So, yeah, that was it. Was okay. So I, I wish I could have done more of it. 
I want to know, because, okay, I like to drive. Mm -hmm. I am not the world's greatest driver, mm -hmm. and you don't want to ride with me at night. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> and I understand why, but go right ahead. But, so what's it... it is it scary as it seems to be? Particularly when the car it, is going out of control. It can be, but your adrenaline is so high that it's a, it's it's just fascinating to be able to take this this piece of metal so fast around a track that it was it was never scary for me until at one time I spun out. But, but I you didn't out. flip over. I did not flip over. I did not flip over, but I spun out and it was like, whew, okay. Let me get up, get up and shake this off, and let me go. Let's go again. And, but the, because I just really wanted to do it, and I really wanted to be a first at something, you know, that was so exciting for me. And you don't talk about it. I don't talk. You don't about say it. anything I about don't even it. Talk about it because like, that I is wish, amazing. It's one of those things where I wanted it to be more than what it really was. Oh. And it, it, we just couldn't get to take off. Okay, one more question. Inside the car, mm -hmm. so is there? Is there? I know there's a net, the netting and stuff. Uh -huh. Is there more stuff in the car mm -mm. to protect? So it's just like being in a regular mm -hmm. car. <laughs> Actually, I, I think being in a regular car is much more. There was, I felt like there was much more protection other than my helmet, uh, the netting, and it's very confined. But there's no, there wasn't any cushion in these that, that I that I was in at that at that time. Now, because there've been so many crashes and things, it's they're much more protective. But at that time, it wasn't. Driving my own vehicle was much more protective. Than, than, oh, you see what? Okay, I'm sorry. Because I've been in a car that has done multiple flips. Uh, it ain't cute. Yeah, I can't. Okay. No, it's can not imagine. cute. Yeah, but no. So I can't see some. Mm -mm. And I like to drive really fast, but I only like to drive really fast when there's only like one or two other cars on the road. Yeah. I, I, I can't do it with a whole, yeah, you know, it's, bunch it's of people. It's very, it's very interesting because sometimes, even now, just driving, I have to be mindful not to go too fast, not to do a speeding ticket. Because if I have people in the car with me, that, but and I do a lot of, but it's, but it's defensive driving the way I do it. It's I can see ahead. I look forward. I look ahead see, to see. I yeah, I look ahead to to see what's what is my next move. It's like a game of what's the next move to be able to to get further down, I can't down play this that road, game. down I the I'm track. I'm a nervous driver. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I love it. Now, we got about two it. minutes left. Yes. So tell them real, real quick how they can find you, how they can find a book. Mm-hmm. Um, Jacqueline Kennedy at breakalegtalent.com or info at breakalegtalent.com. And my other company, the, the Kennedy Project, which is projects at the Kennedy Project.com. Okay. You know what we did not talk about? We did not talk about Cash Cab. This is my buddy on Cash Cab. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Go Google Jacqueline Kennedy and Sharon Quinn Cash Cab. They're putting us in all the promos. Y'all yes. gotta go check it out. In the meantime. And Bobby Flay. Yes. Throw it's down with Bobby Flay. Y'all yes. gotta uh, we famous. But we just about out of time. I want to thank my guest Jacqueline Kennedy thank for sharing you. her industry knowledge with us today. Thank you. Now, before I go, I want to leave you, as always, with a few thoughts. I want you to, one, remember that you can't change the game until you first learn the game. Two, always surround yourself with positive people and positive things. Three, do what you love and love what you do. And lastly, be who you are, but be who you are tastefully. Always have a little class about yourself. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks for watching Model Behavior, and I'll see you guys next week. Class is officially dismissed. Bye, y'all.